some games have good endings. Some games have crap endings. <laughs> but all games end, eventually. Except for The Sims and sandbox games. MMOs. Okay, okay, okay. So not all games. Yeah, not all games end. <sighs> Welcome back. It's me, Amanda. I'm Connor. What game ending made you question all your life choices? What game ending made you feel like your life was finally complete? Let us know. It attends Skyrim. Okay, don't get me wrong, I love Skyrim. It's one of my favorite games. I, I wear a Talos amulet on the regular. I have a Thieves Guild tattoo, but let's be honest, the ending to the main story of the game is far from what it could be. Okay, here we are in literal Nord Heaven fighting the first dragon scene since the third era that was prophesized to destroy the world. And then what do we get? Uh, uh, maybe three minute fight? Yeah, that, that seems pretty unreasonable, considering he's literally the world leader, okay? I mean, like, there is a reason for this, since the battle is designed to be possible, even if all you do is play the main story, which should apparently bring you to, like, the level 10 approximately, meaning that this fight is meant for level 10, uh, but not really anything higher than that. It kind of levels with you, but not, not in the right way. Plus, I mean, we've also literally found a portal to heaven and are fighting this dragon in the afterlife, uh, and all we have to do is just is hit it a bunch. But that's how all other dragon fights go, and this isn't just any other dragon, it, it, okay? It's the World Eater. And the World Eater beater mod aims to fix this whole issue, adding a whole dungeon inside of Alduin's stomach. Yeah, he swallows you, that's a whole other thing. But that's a very old mod uh, that I personally could never get working with Old Rim, uh, let alone Anniversary or Special Edition, so yeah. Sorry, Skyrim, I love ya, but your DLCs have better endings than your main story. Number 9, Five Nights at Freddy's 6 Pizzeria Simulator. I actually love the ending for FNAF 6. I love the whole seeming misdirection of this game. The game is called Pizzeria Simulator, and it is that, but it's also so much more, which is really what the ending builds to and delivers on. It is revealed at the end of the game that Henry Emily was the one orchestrating this whole endeavor with the hopes of bringing all the animatronics together so that he might burn them, destroying them once and for all, and thereby free the spirits that are trapped inside them. Now, the fact that the franchise still continues on past this kind of weakens the ending of FNAF 6 somewhat, but hey, on its own, it's still a brilliant and amazing twist. And then there are some other games that come and then everything's somehow back, so you figure that out. And it ain't security breach. Yeah, yeah, Amanda, you think that the FNAF 6 ending was good? I disagree, because it ended up leading to this goddamn confusing Fest. After FNAF 6, seemingly everything was released, okay? We were done with Afton, all the main protagonists were dead, and we were moving on to a new meta story with FNAF VR. But then Security Breach comes around, and in the true ending, just throws all of that out the window. William's back is burn trap, meaning that he was never really a sentient virus. He couldn't have been in hell, because I doubt that a recharge station can pull a Winchester. Uh, we don't see what happens to the main antagonist that we had been running from the whole time. Uh, Afton's state is left ambiguous again, and uh, oh yeah, Afton came back in the goddamn first place. Like seriously, for the love of God, please, just just let this man die so that we can move on, okay? Coming back a couple of times after we thought he was dead is good, okay? It builds him up, it's unexpected, it makes him out to be a, like an intimidating villain that we can't really get rid of, but then you bring him back more, and it, he, he, then it just becomes a pain in the ass. Okay, like the, the bug that you've stepped on seven times, but you just won't stop twitching. Okay, just let him die and move on. Trust me, okay? It would, it would save on the whole damn Afton Rule 34 art too, okay? Because that's a whole other issue. Number seven, Fable. The first Fable from 2004 has an insane ending. One, when I was a kid playing this game, I never really saw coming. It threw me for a loop. Maybe it was obvious to some, but to me, I was like, wait, what? Jack of Blades becomes your ultimate hero in this game. You, as the once known chicken chaser, with whatever name you choose for your character that, like, you know, is your actual name, looked up to Jack. But near the end of the game, you actually learn that Jack was actually the one who burned down your hometown of Oakvale. Yeah, destroying your family in the process and setting you down this path to become a hero after you are rescued by Maze. To add insult to injury, later on, Maze also betrays you after you're in prison for attempting to rescue your mother. In the end, you must fight and defeat Jack and are given the choice between ultimate good or ultimate evil. Either discard the Sword of Aeons and its power or use it to kill your sister and become the most powerful being of all, as Jack once longed to do. What you do is up to you. I, 
I think I've only ever done the good ending in that game though. I, I like to play good characters, so yeah. <laughs> and at six, Borderlands. The story of Borderlands basically goes that after the planet Pandora is left abandoned, several treasure hunters descend to try and find the fabled vault, rumored to contain a plethora of alien technology. You spend the game exploring Pandora and battling the locals while trying to find said vault. It turns out that the corporation are also after the vault, obviously, because you know, antagonist, and then you gotta deal with them and then beat them to it. When you finally find it though, you're confronted by a monster that you need to kill, and then when you do, guess what's inside? We don't know. Yep, you heard me. We don't actually get to see what's inside the vault we spent the entire game trying to find. It gets resealed for another 200 years, and you get nothing from it. You don't even get a glimpse, which is just absolutely horrifying, okay? It was all, it was a plot device that had no bearing on the story, meaning that the search for the vault was a total waste of time. And since that was the basis of the game, the whole game ends up being a waste of time. At least, if you were playing it for the story and not just to shoot as many people as possible in a cool, cel-shaded style of art, but you know. Number 5, Halo 2. Something about the Arbiter and Master Chief teaming up to take on the Brutes and ultimately defeat the Hierarch's misguided plan is so powerful to me. Halo 2 is by far one of my favorite Halo games ever. Also, I think it's another 2004 game. There's something about the year 2004, man. A lot of cool stuff happened in that year. The story is just so good for this game, and the Arbiter is one of my favorite characters from the Halo franchise. Also, this final sequence that you play through to get to the ending has always stayed with me, as it's not only really fun to play through, but at the time, at least, and I think even still today, I found this to be a pretty good challenge. I think even if I played Halo 2 today, I would still do this final fight and be like, hmm, it's a satisfying final fight. Halo 2 ends with you deactivating Halo, but the danger, of course, continues, as we learn that there are infinitely more rings out there, which have been triggered by the deactivation, with them all, Halo included, now being automatically set to standby for remote activation, which also sets up Halo 3 really well, although I, I wasn't as big of a fan of Halo 3, I'm not gonna lie. And at 4, No Man's Sky. No Man's Sky is an action-adventure survival game developed and published by Hello Games. It received mixed reviews at its 2016 launch, with some critics praising the technical achievements of the procedurally generated universe, uh, and others considered the gameplay lackluster and repetitive. But nobody knew what was coming. The whole point of playing was to get to the center of the galaxy. You explore and you continue farming in an effort to get to the center, hence the comments on the repetitive nature. And after hours and hours of repetitive action, you finally manage to make it. You get to the center of the galaxy, like a journey to the center of a Dwayne Johnson movie, only for everything to break. Um, yeah, and while it sucks and definitely pisses some people off, imagine how pissed people were at release, okay? Where it was hyped even more because no one knew what was waiting at the center and everyone just wanted to know. Some people justify the ending saying it's like a sandbox game so there is no real ending or there are another 250 galaxies to explore due to the procedural generation. But for those who played to figure out what the big mystery was, it, it kind of blows having to deal with that little of a payoff, especially if you enjoyed the exploration aspect and wanted to see the big finale. You didn't get one. Number 3, Portal. The original Portal is the one we are talking about for the purpose of this list, although Portal 2 is also really good too and I wanted to include it. Did you know that Portal was actually recently remastered as well? I love when I have more reasons to play Portal and that's another reason to return. Portal is a puzzle based game with a mystery based narrative, although not all questions are ever really fully answered in this. The ending does conclude the main revelation of the story, that you have become trapped in a testing facility, gone awry, and eventually kind of got to fight your way out facing the boss, the AI in charge of the testing Gladys, once a human named Caroline, who was the assistant to the CEO of Aperture Science. Her name Gladys, while sounding like a human name, is actually an acronym standing for Genetic Lifeform and Disk Operating System. Caroline was used as the Genetic Lifeform component for Gladys. After beating Gladys, you are ejected outside alongside her and end up in the parking lot. Now you're dragged back to the testing facility and we find out actually the cake wasn't a lie. The best part of the game though is the end credits where you learn that Gladys isn't quite dead yet as she sends you as Chell a letter in the form of a song that we know as Still Alive. Still one of my favorite songs to this day, especially from a video game. Portal 2 also has a really stellar ending, but you know, I figured including both of those that would be a little too much Portal love. But yeah, if you love Portal 2 as well, let me know in the comments. But ultimately in at number 2, Mass Effect 3. Mass Effect as a series is a classic third person shooter with an involved plot about Commander Shepard trying to save the galaxy from the evil alien race known as the Reapers, where in the game your choices matter and they actually have an impact on what you can do. You shape the story based on your actions and have to deal with the consequences. Or at least you did. 
until the ending of Mass Effect 3. You are given the option of a multiple choice ending where you can exterminate the Reapers, take control of the Reapers, or integrate synthetic life forms with organic ones. All of these choices are available no matter what you've done, and there are no extra options, meaning that all of your choices throughout all of the games are null and void. It was a major disappointment that angered fans and critics alike, understandably, with many feeling like they'd been cheated by the game's ending, cause like, come on, given the emphasis on your choices throughout the campaign, you'd think that it would have an impact on literally the end. Number 1, The Last of Us. The Last of Us has to have one of the most powerful endings of all time when it comes to narrative based games. In The Last of Us you mainly play as Joel who loses everything in a zombie outbreak, including his daughter. As he wanders through the post apocalyptic wasteland, just trying to survive, he ends up meeting Ellie, who is being transported to the Fireflies, as her genes actually may hold the secret to creating a cure for the infection. Over their time together with him sort of getting her there, the two bond and eventually Joel is faced with a choice. Turns out in in order to create this cure, this vaccine, Ellie's brain will basically need to be harvested and as a result she's obviously going to die. Not able to accept losing the one thing he has come to love in this new horrible world, seeing Ellie as his daughter, he decides to put a stop to the procedure and save her, which is pretty terrible because it also means that you know like everyone else is going to die. Rather than tell the truth however later on, Joel later chooses to lie to Ellie after rescuing her, claiming that the fireflies were no longer searching for a cure as they had discovered there were actually many out there that are like her who are basically immune, implying that an immunity was naturally developing. Which of course we know it wasn't. And also rescuing Ellie, but you know, Ellie kind of wanted to be there. Ugh. Later, Ellie asks Joel to swear that he was telling her the truth, and despite us knowing, as Joel does, that he lied to her, he does double down in an attempt to reassure Ellie's guilty mind, because she lost her friend. It's an ending that leaves the player usually with a plethora of mixed emotions, which is kind of what makes it so powerful and so great. That's all the time we have for today. I've been in Shaw Rank Connor Monroe. <laughs> and I'm your host, Amanda McKnight, reminding you to keep on gaming on. Pew pew. Pew pew. I still do that. Lasers. Yeah. Lasers. Lasers.